Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are playing Franbo once again. This is part four of our playthrough, and we're going to be diving in to chapter four of the game. We're doing one chapter per episode of this series, and I think there's five chapters, so it should be this video and one more video afterwards to wrap this game up, and then I'll try and uh, work on a story explained video as well. If you want to catch up on the story, go and watch the other episodes up to this point. We're going to dive straight in because these are quite long episodes and continue our adventure as we now go to chapter four. Chapter four, part one, my imaginary friend. Let's see what we just escaped from the sort of world of the vegetables or the like weird sort of plant world. So it seems we're back in the real world now with Fran. Here we go, she says, my goodness, the door opened. Wow, interesting. Come on, Mr. Midnight, let's find out where we are. And it looks like that's our bottle of pills there. Oh, the door's gone, okay. Oh, Fran, I hope we can find home soon, I'm starving. Mr. Midnight, look, I think we're at the other side of a bridge. Do you remember the one we tried to cross before we fell into a thirster? Yes, I remember. Great, let's keep on going, Kitty, we have to be careful now. Right, look, here's the pill bottle. Oh, we're getting pulled away. Great, okay, so we have to chase after those. Um, we've got all our items back. I actually want to sort of examine this book, because we still haven't examined the book with the, the name Leon on it. It's like a diary or something. This is weird. So we've got all these masks here. It says, I found myself hunting the truth, but finding the unexpected. I found what my senses couldn't show me. I found the truth that relays silently in the unknown. That's from Leon Castillo, one of the thousands. This is Leon's book, obviously. We've got here an article from July 11th, 1908. My name is Leon. I'm currently 92 years old and living alone in a little house far away from the city. I have to admit, I was never fond of jewelry, houses or clothing. Since childhood, I always talked to animals, plants and insects, even though I never got a response. I never quit. If you were reading this, then maybe it's because you were looking for answers. Maybe you can see things that others can't, or you can feel what others avoid. You can listen to the silence and become one with everything. And this is a picture of Leon with a bleeding eye, which is strange. I guess because he can, like, see everything. This is December 17th, 1875. It says, can you see? And these are the shadowy figures we've been seeing throughout our adventure. I can't stop it. I can't control it. I see the black shadows everywhere. The blood, the messages, the screaming, all of the pain. I can't figure out why this is happening to me. We've got a weird picture of that demonic entity. It says, cry because it hurts. This is December 19th, 1875. I had a vision, I'm still breathing fear. I feel at war with my own mind. One of the shadows came down from the sky. I thought it was an angel. Its name is Remor, Prince of Darkness from the fifth reality. It talked to me, played with me and showed me all the terrors. So this is Remor I'm guessing. It told me that I was the key to its existence. And then we've got another little thing scrawled here which says, inside my head, the stone of wisdom inside my head. Okay. Got another diary entry from January 13th, 1876, and it says, I can see myself around. The other me, tell me lies, talks about all the pain and suffering in my life. Right, this is January 15th, 1876, and it says, I met a shadow for the first time. It talked to me. Camelars, this is called. Their race is called Camelars. They hunt weakness and pain. I asked it about the possession of human bodies, and it said, we are born and feed from fear and the uncontrolled illness of the human mind. We are invisible to them, but our existence grabs every single living cell of the body until the end. After that, it started raining and it walked away from me, leaving a black, oily path after it. I believe water may purify them. Okay, so maybe we need to keep this in mind. It's got another note from January 16th, 1876. After seeing the Kamalas reacting to water, I thought of trying a little experiment. Last night I encountered something amazing. The Kamalas transformed into a new kind of creature when exposed to water. The metamorphosis was painful to watch. Yeah, we've been seeing these like things. These are what uh, Fran calls fairies. So I guess when exposed to water, these shadowy figures turn into these like angel-like entities. 
After the terrible screaming, the Camelus calmed down and started to cry on the ground. It felt like the pain was disappearing. And after a few minutes, a bright and peaceful being was rising in front of me. So this is it there. It felt like the bright creature could read my thoughts. I thank you for waking me up. I was suffering. I must go where I belong. If Thurster awaits, all Valakas must go there after waking up. If you wish to see the lights, come with me. You have the key, it said. It didn't answer after a while, it faded away. Hmm. Key, okay. February 2nd, 1876. I was reading my writings to see if I'm missing something. I recalled Ramor from the fifth reality. If there is a fifth reality, there must be at least four more. I was thinking that Ephirsta may not be a city in this world, but a reality by itself. I wish all answers came to me. I deeply regret the fact that I didn't accept the Valakus invitation. Since I saw the Valakus, I keep seeing this, di uh, this diagram spinning in my head and a single sentence. Time is the rhythm of your perception. I don't understand the drawing, neither do I. March 13th, 1876, I got a visit from my son, Brian. I told him about the things that I've seen, but he didn't want to hear and left. I don't blame him, I understand that the reality presented before my eyes is invisible to most people. I wish I could find a friend just like me, because my son, he thinks I'm insane. Wow, so no one believed him. Kind of like no one believes Fran. Now we've got quite a lot to go, guys, in this book. So I'm not going to read all the rest right now, um, I'll go through it, you guys can obviously pause it, read it for yourself if you want, but I will look into this, you know, a bit more for like our story explained video. I might even read a bit more in this episode, but for now like I want to crack on. You can see here he's referencing the uh, other world that we went to, black cats there, there's a first day in this book, these are all the five realities, the alphabets. Of the first strike, I'm guessing that is the Valakas shield, which is obviously the masks that they were wearing. And we've got these things called Senna CD, the end of vibration when both ends of the opposites of the same degree resides in the third and fourth reality death. So this is the the Senna seed D or whatever it's called. These represent death. Pandora, the creation of the five realms. Okay. Then Mabuka is the end of light. Mother Mabuka is letting me go. I've spent 15 days here in Mabuka's den and I'm tired. I don't need to hide from a pain anymore because it's part of me. It feels like love is everywhere and everything. Uh, okay, it's dark. But yeah, I'll look into this for this story explained video a bit more, guys. But I feel like we've had a quick overview there of this diary. Lots of information in there. Cat's just licking its butt there. Let's go to the next screen. We need to get our pills. So let's go. Ah, oh. Keeps dragging them away. It says home this way though, so uh, you know, let's keep going. Oh, no, we're in a cage. Or a net, I should say. Oh no, I shouldn't have touched the pills, bad Fran. Is there anything we can do? Cut ourselves out? There we go. That worked. Oh. Fran, you're already here. Well, I wasn't expecting you until 2.35. And as I see it, you are not trapped anymore. Interesting. Anyway, let me introduce myself. I'm Itwood, your faithful friend. Itwood? Do I know you from somewhere else? You seem familiar. Yes, I'm the creature of the night. We've been playing together. I helped you get Mr. Midnight back, you see. Really? Huh. Well, I think I managed quite well to find him on my own. Hey, aren't you the one that made the sisters mad? No, it wasn't me making the sisters mad. They believed it was me. You see, but uh, that's because they never looked into themselves. What do you mean by, they never looked into themselves? They blamed me instead of facing the fact that their parents never loved them. But let's stop talking about the sisters, shall we? Don't you recognise me, dear Fran, the long man with a top hat? I always came by night and told you stories when you were just a little baby. 
I came to you after you imagined me. But I'm not imaginary, you see, I'm part of your reality. Did I imagine you? You look quite familiar, yes? I can't deny that. I exist because you exist. The truth is that you were able to imagine me because I already existed. Anyway, we don't have time to talk about this right now. Actually, I'm here to take you home, so follow me. Why should I, sir? I can't trust you. I won't hurt you. I'm not made out of darkness. I'm your friend. Yeah, I wouldn't trust this guy at all. He seems like really sus, doesn't he? Hmm. All right. You seem nice. I'll go with you, but I won't trust you. Not yet. Uh, that's a good estimation. That's fine. Come on now. I have something to show you. All right, let's go. Oh, God. That is creepy. That is really weird. He's super tall. Like, tall skeleton thing. Here's his little home. Behold, the Itward flying machine. What do you think? I've been pronouncing his name right, because it's Itward, but I think it, you would pronounce it Itward. Um, so it kind of rolls off the tongue a bit better. I'll just say, I love it. It has many buttons to push. Yes, with this gorgeous piece of machinery, I'll take you home. We'll fly as soon as I fix the details. Besides, it's not 235 yet. Well, that sounds great. But what is it about 235, sir? I don't understand. It's when time becomes slower, and that gives us a chance to enter the Ultra Reality. Inside the Ultra Reality, we can travel wherever we want to go. Right now, we are standing on the endless limits of the Second Reality. But you are part of the Third Reality. Do you understand? Yes, I do understand. It's, it sounds insane. But sir, should I just wait until you're done fixing the machine? Wait? Of course not! You're going to help me by getting water and fireberries, alright? Uh, okay. It's better I do something than nothing at all, I guess. Great, here is my amazing handmade bucket for water. I made it myself. Okay, that is impressive. I'll give you that. Ah, and for fireberries, you'll realise which berries to pick because of a fire. Alright, but sir, can I ask you something? Why do we need berries and water? Ah, well, the berries are incredibly good fuel. They last for many, many hours. And the water is to get rid of the dirt, like the camelars. Oh, the camelars, I see. I hope they don't come around the flying machine. We never know, but we do know that they don't like water, yes? Oh, darling, I almost forgot. Your medicine. You'll need to take it. Some things are still invisible to your eyes, you see. Invisible to my eyes? Hmm, I see. I was trying to catch the pills earlier, but the trap caught me first. Oh yes, about that. I'm sorry. I needed to get your attention somehow. Just talk to us, man. You don't have to catch us in a net like a weird predator or something. It's okay, sir. I defeated the trap, like, in one second. Anyway, I'll go and get the fireberries and the water, and I'll be right back. Great, I'll be preparing the machine. Sweet, okay, so we need to find fireberries. So do we use the pills? That looks like a fireberry to me. Wow, so much hair and so shiny. Can we cut that down with our trusty knife? Negative, okay. Ooh, what is this? Get out, get out, you are trespassing on my territory. Huh? Excuse me, I thought you were dead. How can you possibly think that? You have no manners, young lady. I'm very sorry, but you seem to be all rotten and bloody. Me? Rotten and bloody? I think you are misunderstanding the situation. Why would you say that, Mr. Moose? Mr. Moose? I'm not a moose. I'm a deedle worm. Excuse me, a deadly worm? No, no, not a deadly worm, a deedle worm. I don't go around killing creatures. I just give back to the soil what creatures took from it and don't need any more. But I only see a talking moose. Where are you? Oh, gross. That is weird. Down here, creature. <laughs> He's like a little grim reaper or something. Can't you see me? Oh, there you are. You're so tiny. Hello, my name is Fran. Hello, Fran. Can I ask you, why did you touch the moose in the first place? Normally, only scavengers would touch dead animals. Are you one? Of course not. I was trying to see if I could climb on it to reach for fireberries. Ah, so these are the fireberries. Makes sense, because they're on fire. I see, I think it's possible. The moose is still very sturdy and solid. But the fireberries are on fire. You can hurt yourself. 
Yes, I see the fire, but I have to take them somehow. Good luck with that. Climb on now. I'll keep working. Thanks, sir. Okay, so... We've got a sign now that says hell as well. Which is kind of weird, because before it said home, now it says hell. Let's see what we can do anyway with this. Let's see if we can cut them. I could cut the berries off a tree, but they are on fire. <gasps> I know what to do here, guys. We need to switch things over with the pills. Use the knife to cut them down. There we go, she's cutting the berries down. Which we now have in our possession. And now we can go down again by changing things back over. There we go, hopefully the fireberries don't set our uh, purse on fire or anything like that. Okay, let's go to the next screen. Oh, it's this thing again. Hello, are you those shiny insects that get stuck on trees because of curiosity? We usually get stuck, yes. How do you know this? You're not one of us. Well, I met some of your kind before. I helped them to get free from curiosity. Ah, this is very nice of you. Curiosity can lead us to unexpected situations. Yes, I think curiosity is a good thing, but are you stuck? Not at all. We're just trying to make our hair the longest hair ever. Wow, that sounds amazing. Good luck. I have to go now. Right, well, uh, fair enough. Uh, I need help, please. Would you allow me to tie this bucket to your beautiful hair? Tie a bucket to our hair? Why? That sounds insane. Because we want to dip it, obviously, off the cliff, right? We can want to see if we can get um, some water from down there below us. Oh, it's not insane at all. I need water from under the cliff, but I can't reach it. I need to use your beautiful long hair as a rope, so please help me. All right, we'll help you. Tie the bucket real tight. Oh, thank you. You're very nice. Fill up the whole bucket, please. Look at this. It's working. That's also really, really creepy. The bucket is now full of water. Thanks very much. Ah, oh, thank you, shiny insects. I have to go now. I have to go home. Home is somewhere we all wish to belong. But does home belong somewhere? What? I'm sorry, I didn't really understand that question. It was a rhetorical question. I just wanted to say that you are your own home. Welcome yourself inside. You will find many doors to open. Oh, that sounds mysterious and beautiful. I'll try to do that some other time. Bye. Yeah, bye. Right, here we go. We've got a bucket of water. We've got the, uh, the fire berries. We can finally switch over to reality and go back to this weird Itwood guy and give him the items. Did you find the fire berries and water already? We need them for our journey back home. Yes, I did find them. Do I have to use them on you? Here you go. Sit, Itwood. Here's the bucket of water. I got help from the shiny insects. You mean the luciferns? They are nice, yes, but only when you see them in this reality. They're very dangerous if you ever see them in the fifth reality. They can burn you. Wow, burn me? Well, I haven't been into the fifth reality yet. I don't recommend it. What's reasonable there may be the worst you'll ever experience. This English is really broken. It's like sometimes really throws me off uh, the sentences. Oh, I forgot to thank you for the water. Thank you, Fran. Okay, now we give him the... Um, now we give him the berries as well. Sir, I brought the fire berries, but they are not on fire anymore. Magnificent. They will do just fine. Thank you very much, my darling. Ah, Fran, it's 2.34. The journey will begin. Let's go inside the machine. Nice. Let's do it. Let's get moving. Let's get on our adventure here. Little cat follows us in. Wow, that's kind of... Uh, Kind of cool. Right, it's 2.36. We have a great possibility of reaching the target in good condition. We'll soon be on our way to the third reality. Are you excited, Fran? It sounds exciting. Plontress told me about different realities, but where are they? You'll soon understand. The answers are not easy to recognize. Huh, sounds strange to me, sir. Time goes on as it has to in order for you to be alive. Okay, and now he's on a little exercise bike looking thing. If it all happens now, you'd probably explode. Are you telling me that 
the answers I'm looking for will come to me when they want? Not exactly, but you know what? I'd rather say, through time, you have to explore and experience to understand. This means the answers will come when you find them, not when others tell you how or where to find them. But now, Fran, we have to get things done. Talking won't take you home. What things, sir? The machine needs some maintenance, and I think you would be... You would do incredible work. Here are the fireberries and the water you gathered before. Nice. You'll need them to get the water pump working again and the fuel mixed. You'll find all information you need when you enter the room to the left. But feel free to enter any room you wish. I'll be quite busy fixing the automatic driver. But if you have something to ask, I'll be here. We need to go and find out, I guess. So we've got the little cat again. He's alive again after falling in the river earlier. Is this what we need to fix? Wow, that's a huge spinning top. Okay. Is it this? I don't know what we're meant to be doing here. Hmm, it's totally empty. Maybe we put the berries in here. No? Do we put the water in here? Yep, the pump is now filled with water so we can close that back up. Oh wait, I think maybe we need to uh, actually light this with a match maybe. I can't turn on the fire, there's no gas coming from the pipes. Okay. I think we need to try and light that light up green here, maybe. Just trying to get the pipe to work. Oh. We need to fix a leak. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go back for a sec, guys. Um, I'm going to see if there's anything in here that I can get, like tape or something to fix up the leak. We've also got a science experiment here. I don't know what this is all about. What do you have inside, little bottle? Oh. This pink hose may be good to connect somewhere. Ah, yes. Blue hose ready to use. So I'm guessing we're trying to connect up all of these different parts. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. We're kind of mixing up all these different chemicals into here, but I don't know what, what for. We don't have any instructions. Oh, wait, we do. Look, there's the numbers up here. Right, let's go back a sec. Let's try this again. I want to look at this as well. Reality view. Ultra reality view. We've got a sign here that says chemical mixture as well. Micronutrients in fireberries will supercharge an engine and ensure it lasts forever. Okay, this all ties into what we're meant to be doing. I think this is like how we have to mix up everything. It looks quite complicated. What's this say? This is all in some kind of other language, but it does show what we need to do. So match, yep, to light the burner at the top, which is what we thought. That needs uh, needs to be in this position to power the gas. This needs to be connected up to the boiler as well. Um, we need to obviously duct tape the tube up because it's broken. Uh, but I don't know how because we don't actually have anything to, uh, to use as duct tape. I'm going to explore a bit more, guys, in case there's an item we're missing or something from elsewhere. Oh, yeah, look, here, duct tape. We got it. I'll keep this. Duct tape is always good to fix stuff. Can we take the hammer? A hammer, obviously, to hammer stuff. We've got a book here as well. Oh, that looks horrible. Making shoes from human feet. What's this? Camelot Hunt. This is like a little mini game. Get ready. Oh, it's like Space Invaders. How do we move? Oh, I see. We move with this. This is kind of fun. A little Space Invaders mini game. Don't know if we receive anything from uh, winning. Oh, there we go. I used to be alright, Space Invaders. Maybe, uh... Oh, no. Game over. I don't know if we need to win at this game at some point. I'll come back to that if we need to play it for, uh, like, a puzzle later. But for now, let's go back, because we've got the duct tape. I can actually fix up this now. Which is good. 
So, there we go. So that's repaired. Now this needed to be in this position to let the gas flow up. I still don't know if the gas is working. Let me just keep trying. Yay, it's working. It's really hard to tell if the gas is working, but that seems to be working now, which is awesome. So I'm guessing this is... Yeah, this is this must be fine now, right? Cool. Yeah, in fact, the light's on. This is all burning away. Okay. So now we need to tackle this puzzle, which is going to be tricky. So we need to use... We need to have a look at this to know which hoses go where. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's try it. So, we need to take this hose, I think, and pop it there, like that. And then we need to take the is it purple hose, I think, and pop it in there, like that. She says it's right, so that's good. We need one more hose. Hmm, we're missing one. So where would that be? I'm going to explore this way, guys. I think I'm missing some hoses. This is weird. Can I take any of this stuff? Oh, this looks like a mathematics problem. Okay, what if we change over in here? Hey, the sisters are here, holding a key. That's weird. Are you here to kill Itwood? They're not talking to us. It's very strange. Can we take the key from them? Yeah, a little key. I wonder what it's for. Hmm, okay. I think we saw a key earlier, didn't we? Let's go through here. Oh my god, look at him now. He's like a weird clown. This is strange. Who's this? Seconds and minutes and hours and days. There's an eyeball here. There's a pencil as well. I don't need this pencil. I already have a crayon. Oh, we've got another connector though. That's good. And there's another tube here. Sweet. Okay, let's switch it back. I think we have enough um, things now, guys, to connect them all up. So, can we combine that with this one? Nothing, no. Okay. That works. Nice. Okay. And then, maybe we use this one then to connect these ones. Yes. There you go, perfect. So this is all done now. This is all connected. Now we just need to make sure that we've got all of the handles correctly turned. Let's have a look. Um, okay, so the handle needs to be turned right, as you can see there. And then we mix in this order, as you see here. So I might need to take a little picture of this actually on my phone so I remember it. I don't know how I'm going to edit this. I'm going to have to just kind of chop it up I think so that it, <laughs> it goes together seamlessly. Let's have a look. Okay, um, so first of all what we want to do is flip this across to the right. And um, we need that to go to the left. Can we use a match to light that? Yep. Sweet. I don't know if this is... I think we need to mix all these things up though, don't we? Because this isn't actually flowing downwards yet. So first of all, we need to use the fireberries in here. The fireberries that aren't on fire into the vase. Okay. So that's the first step. Next we need A18 into here. Then we need this one into here. Then we need R15 goes into this one. And what was the last one? The last one was this, I think, into here. That worked. I think it's done. Super chemistry, Master Frambo. Well, that was a tough puzzle, guys. I don't. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to chop that up quite a lot, but um, it's a good thing I took a picture on my phone of that diagram. So we've got all this bubbling up, and this seems to have worked now. And here he comes to congratulate us. I finally managed to fix the automatic driver. Do you need help, Fran? 
I think I managed myself quite well too. I did all that you asked me. What should we do now, sir? Well, I wanted to ask you if you're afraid of rabbits. There's a little rabbit in one of these rooms and I'm... I'm deeply afraid of it. Would you like to help me get rid of it? A rabbit? My guess, that depends on a rabbit, sir. With all the things I've seen, I just can't imagine one kind of rabbit. Is it a chocolate rabbit or one with horns and killer eyes? You'll have to see it for yourself. It has a pink nose and blue boots. It's just sitting there, no blinking, no movement. It's staring all the time. It doesn't sound good. It does sound very scary, sir, but show it to me, otherwise I'll never know. Brave you are, dear. Follow me now. Okay, let's go. Let's go and check out this weird rabbit. Oh. Through here we go. Well, that doesn't look too bad. It's just a stuffed rabbit. There, see, it's just sitting there. Isn't that a strange isn't that strange behaviour? From what I see, it's just a toy, sir. It won't move. Would you please try to make contact with it? I don't dare touch it. Okay, that's fine. Alright, sir, I'll take the rabbit and show you there's nothing to be afraid of. Let's go. Be nice and easy, I'm sure. See, it's just a fluffy rabbit. Nothing to be afraid of. Oh, you're right, Fran. There is nothing to be afraid of. Oh, no! Stupid Fran. Why didn't... I mean, I didn't think that he was going to do that either, to be honest. I finally was starting to trust the guy. Then he steals Mr. Midnight and just books it out of a room. So we're trapped in here now. Let's switch it over. Wow, that is weird. What is this? A giant mechanical rabbit by the look of it. Oh, a mechanical rabbit's not really cute, no. Nope. Can we uh, take this? That's the number eight. It says Otten on it. Okay. It would made a paper boat. Well, it's no time for that, Fran. We've got a wrench. That's probably gonna be very useful to us, I imagine. We've got all these cards around the room. We've got a number nine here. We've got a card by the door as well. Number six. Okay. Oh, there's another card behind the rabbit here, but we can't get to it. So we need to get the rabbit to move. Um, because obviously we know that's there in our reality and we'll obviously be here in this reality as well, but not when that rabbit's there. How can we get him to move? <laughs> Look at this little rabbit now, it's got a wig on it like us. Actually dressed like Fran. Can we pick up carrots? Yeah, we can use a carrot. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can give it to the rabbit. Because that makes sense to me. I don't know about you guys. Oh, yeah, he likes that. A five, nice. So we, we know now what that number is. Don't know what the numbers are for yet. Can we go through here? Oh, nice. What is this? A battery. Okay. Oh, let's use the wrench on here to open this. And again on the other one, like this. Sweet. So now we can put the battery in here. There you go, battery placed, and yes, it works. Okay, cool. Right, let's see what this does then. Whoa, a mechanical arm. Are you alive? Can we go down? No. Alright, let's change things over again. Because we can probably mess with all this stuff in this reality. Can we examine this now and turn it, I wonder? Yeah, we can reach it. Okay, I think it likes to push buttons. Let's press this button and see what happens. Hey, it worked! Sweet! Whoa, is this Fran's parents? Oh, gross. 
That is nasty. What the heck? A water symbol. I love how she just goes over and, <laughs> and examines this. Um, what what has happened here? What is this? Mommy, Daddy, who did this to you? What if we change it over? Oh, now it's nice again. Okay. And what is this? I have seen these in movies. The thief always knows what to do. So this is like a safe. It's locked. Okay. So maybe this is the combination from the cards. Let's go back down and examine the cards in this room. Oh, it does have a direction on it as well. So it's eight left. Wait, I think these numbers tell us the order to um, to use them in as well. Yeah, five right. Okay, these are all the numbers. Okay, let's just go and do this thing, guys. I'm going to just try different orders. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll try and work it out. I think this is one of the situations where I might have to cut to like when I figured it all out. But um, here we go. We want to go right eight. Then right five. Left eight. Right six. Left nine. There we go. We opened it. Finally. It took me a while, guys. <laughs> but I figured out the, the order and that that's the order there. I'll put it on screen or something for you guys in case you're trying to play through the game yourself. Because this is a, a tricky puzzle. Right, we're in the dark. Let's see if we can turn on our lights. Oh, surprise, Fran. Happy birthday. Wait a second. Were you doing this all along to, like, give us a birthday party? I don't know if I trust him, guys. I don't know if I trust this guy at all. We've got a cat here. We've got teddy bears all around. I don't trust this guy still. I still don't trust him. But here we go. Oh, a birthday party. Whoa, I thought you wanted to kill Mr. Midnight. You lied to me. We lied to you in order to keep your attention in another direction. I'm very sorry I had to fool you, my friend. We wanted to surprise you, dear Fran. Come and eat cake. I feel like this cat is in on it. Like, I feel like these two are the same thing or something, or they're working cahoots. All right, thank you, Kitty. You really surprised me. Uh, and thank you, Itwood, sir. Right, here we go then. A little birthday meal, some cake. The cake is made of all ingredients you like. Mr. Midnight told me which ones. And we have something very special for you from all the members of the ship. That means all of us, naturally born or handmade beings. Here you go. I hope you find it educational. Wait, what is this? Wow, I love the wrapping. Can I open it now, please? Yes, go ahead, open it. Wait, so this looks like a cat wrapped up in like paper, right? Let's have a look. It is. It's a little cat doll. Wow, a cat doll. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. It's beautiful. It may give your eyes a new perception, you know, like the ultra reality. Is that what happens when I take the red pill, sir? Is the ultra reality what I see? Well, it depends. Would you like some explanations? Yeah, go on, explain it. Look, what you've seen is a mixture of different realities. And the ultra reality is like an invisible room where everything exists at the same time. For example, at this exact coordinate of time and space, we're having a birthday party. But in the ultra reality, other things are happening all of the time. Slower, faster, or just invisible to the human eye. It's because of time humans can define past, present, and future. Defining things encapsulates reality. It gives humans a chance to understand their environment. You have a different perception of the environment, it's not linked to definitions. Do you understand what I say? Kind of. <laughs> I kind of feel like uh, I kind of get the gist of what he's saying, but not fully. Uh, I'm not sure, sir. I think maybe. I feel a bit dizzy. Ah, <laughs> well, that may be because the ship's going up and down. Blow out the candles now, dear. We're about to reach our destination. You mean, we're about to get home? Did you hear that, Kitty? Yes, we're about to arrive. 
Really? Wow, how exciting. Alright, here I go. Alright, let's blow that cake out. Doesn't sound good. Oh no. Oops, he's gone. Oh dear, what's happening, Mr. Midnight? Are you alright? I'm alright, but I hope the ship won't break. It sounds dangerous. Fran, you have to help. I have to drive the machine again. The automatic driver was destroyed by the Camelas. There's one left alive. You have to go and get rid of it. Find it fast. How do I do that, sir? Water. That cleans the dirt. Hurry up now and remember, it may be hiding from your eyes. Else we have, may have to change uh, between realities. And I've just noticed as well, we've got this like um, thing from Ephirster here as well. The king from Ephirster is in the picture there. Oh my goodness, Kitty, I'm scared. Me too, Fran. We have to find the Camelar. I really hope the water destroys it. Let's go. So we have to find uh, those kind of black shadowy figures and use the water on it. Um, I don't know if there's like a way we can check through here to find it. Let's go up again, I guess. What does this even do? I still don't understand that. A water symbol. I guess this is connected to something. Okay. What's this? Oh, okay. So, yeah, that makes water come out. There we go. So, we filled the bucket with water. So, we have the water to destroy the thing now. We need to still locate it. So, let's go back through here. Take a pill. That's really freaky. Oh, here it is. Uh, okay, so let's use the water bucket on it. <sighs> Dousing it. That's taking care of that. Oh. It's gone. It's all inky and weird. Ah, don't run away. Where are you going? Do we have to go and find it again now? Let's have a look. Maybe it's gone out of the ship. Yeah, here it is. Right, I think what we do, guys, is douse it with the water from this now. Let's go. Ah, oh, that's wrong. Let's try this. There we go, we got it again. Now it's moving. So now we just do this. Oh, no we don't, we turn it one more time. Boom. And now one final time should do it. Or maybe not. Oh yeah, it has. You always have to do things three times in video games, don't you? It's really weird. I think I finally got rid of a Camelar. I'm the best. I should go back to Whitwood. Yeah, let's go. Let's change things over. Here we go. Itwood, sir. We did it. The Camelar is gone. It's gone, yes. But it's too late, dear. I can't take you home. We are going down. No, please, don't tell me that. It's not fair. Not fair. I'm afraid it looks like... It's the end for a Frambo. I will always take care of you, my dear. I don't know if I trust you, man. You look like the Grim Reaper or something. In fact, he, look, he looks like the death symbol from the diary we looked at at the start of the video. Got a cutscene, though. Might be the end of a chapter, I think. And the ship was going down until it crashed. Everything was destroyed. And there it goes. Boom. The end. That's not the end of the game, surely. But it was a very sad ending, it would. Tell me another story, please. What? What's going on? Alright, this is the story of Franbo and me. When she promised never to forget me, or about the magic of everything. Heh <laughs> I promise it would, I'll never forget you. Good. Now it's time to sleep. So this game is taking all sorts of twists and turns. Because this is strange, it's like it's become a new game now. Expect me in your dreams, my friend. 
Okay, so that was all a story we were being told by Itward. Chapter 4, Part 2, Doctor's Prescription. So we've got more of Chapter 4 now. I am going to finish it in this video, uh, as I have been with every chapter, guys. So this might be a super long video, I don't know. I'm not sure how long this chapter is going to be. But either way, we're waking up to a pretty cute little deer there. Deers are actually one of my favourite animals. Itward, where are you? Oh, Kitty, we are alive. We survived the crash. Oh dear, yes, we are alive. Hmm, but Itward is gone. He brought us home, though. We're outside the town, Fran. I can smell it. Are you sure, Kitty? Are we already home? I thought you'd be happier about it. What is it? It's just that I wonder where Itward is. I wish I could say goodbye. Maybe you can take the medicine to see him again. Yes, Kitty, but I took all the pills already, you see. The bottle is empty. Anyway, let's go home. Maybe Itward will come to me someday. It's weird how she fixates over this Itward guy. She's known him for like 10 minutes. What's this? A red bicycle. Is this Itward's bicycle or mine? Let's go up here. We don't have any more pills to take either. And look, we're in the town now. Oh my goodness, this is our street kitty, Hayes Street. Yes it is. Okay, can we go into the house? It says Hay Street. Uh, so my house is in this direction, okay. Got a window open up there. And here we are, this looks much more grey than I remembered, so this is Fran's house. Well, I hope Aunt Grace will be happy to see me. I'm sure she will, let's go. Aunt Grace, hello? Maybe she's not home, dear. Do you have a key to go inside? No, I don't have it, Kitty. But I know there's a hidden key somewhere. Wait, we do have a key, though. We took the key off the sisters. Can we not use that? I just need to remember where. Hmm, let's find it. Can I use this? Oh, no, I don't have the key, actually. We had that key that we took from the sisters, but it's not here anymore. I want to examine this as well. Wow, it opened. Is that a keyhole? I wonder what would happen if I find a key. We had a key. Did We had a key from the sisters. Why have we still not got that in our possession? I should have unlocked it. There probably would have been something in there. Oh, well. Is there anything under here? Just some worms and insects? I took the key, signed Fran. Hey, that's me. Okay. Can we climb this trellis and go through the open window? Come here, Kitty. You must climb and go through the window. I couldn't find the key. It seems I already took it. You already took the key? But you don't have it. That sounds strange. It's kind of like... It mirrors what happened as well, because we did take the key in the last part of the chapter from the two sisters on the ship, but now we don't have it. So it's like... It's almost like the parallel universe thing, you know. It's very strange, I only found a note that I don't remember writing. But now, in order to get inside Kitty, you must climb and open the door for me. Ugh, alright then, wish me luck. You can do it Kitty, be careful. Here he goes. Excellently done. What an expert, Kitty. Is he gonna open the door now? Mr. Midnight? Do you hear me? Kitty, open the door. Oh. Wait, is this the doctor? Fran, I can't believe this. You're alive. Where were you? Dr. Dean, I'm fine. Please don't take me back to the asylum. I've been looking for you for a long time now. How did you escape? That's none of your business. Leave me alone now, please. Hmm, but why are you outside the house? Well... I don't have the key, but Mr. Midnight is inside now. He climbed and went through the window of the second floor, sir. Mr. Midnight? Is that your missing cat? Yes, but we found each other in the end, sir. May I ask why you're here? I came to meet Miss Grace. I have something very important to tell her. I think she's not at home. Well, it may be better this way. You'll have to come with me then. No, I won't leave Kitty again. Let's wait until he opens the door. Fran, 
I don't believe your cat is inside the house. That's impossible. I'm telling you the truth. He's inside. He will open up the door in a minute. Stop it, Fran. Face reality. Your cat is dead. You must come with me now. No! Leave us alone. Man, sucks. I don't like that doctor. I don't trust him. I don't trust many of the characters in this game, to be honest. Oh no, the spirits are appearing. Here we go, the doctor's driving us home. I'm sorry, Fran. I don't want to hurt or scare you. I'm just worried about Mr. Midnight, sir. You made me leave him. Is he really alive? Of course he is, sir. Why would I lie about it? That feels wrong. You know, Fran, I was fired from the asylum because I knew too much. I have found things that I do not yet understand. I really thought you were dead. Take a look at these documents. Wow, okay, let's have a look. So this is family murder on Hayes Street. The bodies were perfectly sliced. That's just what we saw on the ship, wasn't it? Martin and Lucia Bow uh, Dagenhart were found earlier this week brutally murdered in their residence on Hayes Street. The investigating police officer, Marco Holmer, said, It seems the bodies were perfectly sliced, which would cause a quick, instantaneous death. There were also no signs of a struggle in the house, so the victims have been caught completely by surprise and were unable to fight back. The police interrogated Grace Dagenhart, Lucia's twin sister, but the police didn't find any useful information. The youngest in the family, Fran Bow, was found in the woods one day after her parents' murder. She froze to death. What? If we didn't freeze to death, we're alive, right? Um, and then this is from Gladys Hannah. Dear Gladys, let the newspaper know about Fran Bow. She was found in the woods frozen to death. She ran away from home after finding her parents murdered. And so here is a newspaper clipping of Fran Bow, which says, uh, 34 to 44, so she was 10 years old. Fran is now free from all pain. We hope you reunite with your family in heaven. But I'm not dead, sir. These are all lies. I see that. I also found your medicine was switched. You were given a new variant of duotine. When I looked at it in the laboratory, the levels of ecto... Ectoplomatin were too high. That can't be good. Ectoplomatin creates a door between the subconscious and the conscious. The problem is, if the ectoplomatin is too high, the door will be too wide, and that can create great confusion in your brain. A great confusion in my brain? I'm a bit confused. But that's because of all the new things that I can see and feel. What do you mean, Fran? I can see the ultra-reality, sir, and also travel into other worlds. Ultra-reality? That must be the consequences of duotine, nothing more. That's not true. If I had some more medicine, I could show you. You don't need that medicine anymore. Besides, it's all in your head, Fran. All in my head, you say? Then maybe I can control it. I mean, you are imagining things, that's all. Oh my god. Okay, that's weird. I tried to tell my mother the truth, but father would harm her as well. I don't want my father playing with his knife again. My arms hurt. Oh, did your father harm you with his knife, Doctor? What? Who told you that? You did, or... Didn't you, sir? I, I haven't said anything to you about it. Oh my goodness, then it's true. Oh please, let's focus. But you're not listening to me, sir. We need to find out the truth. I wonder who is behind all of this. The nurses, Oswald, who knows? I do know, sir. It's the big black monster, Ramor. He took my parents and now he hunts me and he wants me dead. Oh, I wish I stayed in a Thurster with Polontris and the Great Wizard. What are you talking about? Please, Fran, I'm serious. I never said goodbye to Itwood or Polontris, and my kitty is all alone. Polontris? Itwood? Please, Fran. Polontris is the doctor of the first day. He is a flying creature, very fluffy. And Itwood is my, fa is my faithful friend. He brought me home with this machine. It seems you've been living inside a fairy tale. It wasn't good all the time, sir. The twins are gone because of me. I saw myself killing Mr. Midnight, and I saw mother and father too. The twins? 
What twins? The girls that were attached to each other. Attached, you say? That reminds me of Clara and Mia. Two girls in the asylum that claimed to see a creature named Edward or something. Edward? I think you are misunderstanding, sir. It's Itward. But what happened to these girls? Dr. Oswald was experimenting on them. He sewed them together. Mostly to see the reactions of the DNA, but nothing happened. That sounds really unethical. Uh, that sounds like really, really, like, it's like the whole asylum should get shut down for that. A few months later, they died and their bodies were thrown into a well, and we saw that earlier in the game. So this is explaining the story to us, guys. Um, this is all, like, really good information. That is awful, sir. You can't take me back to the asylum. Don't worry, I won't. I brought you with me so you can help me. Maybe we can find something that will lead us to those responsible for all of this disgrace. Thank you, Doctor. Maybe Polontris was right about you. Yeah, maybe this Doctor's okay. He seems like he's actually alright and like we were led to believe that he's bad at the start of the game, but actually he's trying to like, you know, reveal the corruption of the facility. You're not a bad Doctor, you're just an old man following the rules. Following the rules? Well, not tonight. Here we go then. Let's see where the story goes. Here we are. But this is the cemetery, sir. What are we doing here? You'll see. Come on, follow me. Okay. Let's go. This is your parents' resting place, and also yours. Why did you bring me here, sir? I'm sorry, Fran, but things are how they are, and your parents were killed. Knowing who killed them can make us make things right. What do you mean by right, sir? I mean that if we can find the guilty ones, we will have justice. Use the law to punish such behaviour and prevent others from being harmed. I understand, sir, but how do you need my help? To find clues and evidence, we need to open up the coffins. Alright, sir, I'll help. Maybe the Deedle Worms came already. Who? Hmm. Anyway, we have to find shovels to dig. I'll go left, and you go right. I'll see you in a few minutes, right here, okay? Yes, Dr. Dean. I'll see you soon. Okay, so we need to open up the coffin somehow. To show that Fran's not really inside there, I guess, and expose the corruption. What is this? Oh, it's stuck. It must be a shovel storage room, so we need a, a way to open this door. This is Fran's grave, I think. Oh, it's all of their graves. Martin Bow, Lucifer Bow, Dagenhart, Fran Bow, Dagenhart. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything we can do with a grave. I don't think so. So let's go back. Is there anything through here? Oh yes, we can open the car and there's a crowbar. This should open the door then, shouldn't it? Right, let's go back then. Um, okay, I'm going to try opening the door with the crowbar, guys. Here we go, let's see if this works. Did that work? Oh, there's a little acorn inside. Oh, that's a pine cone, not an acorn. Shh, you have to keep it down, Fabio. Oh, but I'm not Fabio, I'm Fran. Hello, little pine cone. Oh, what? Oh my goodness, a giant. Please don't be scared, I won't harm you. Well, we, we trapped one of them in a mousetrap earlier, so she can't say that. I thought no giants could see us. Look, I think I can see you because I have very big eyes, you see. Ah, I see. Well, I'm Sebastian, by the way. The tribe's collector. The tribe's collector? That sounds exciting. Right now, we're trying to find some shiny leather. We need it for our mating ritual. <laughs> that's weird, okay. <laughs> Kinky. Uh, oh, that's quite interesting. Shining leather. Uh, hmm. Yes, last year we used old human skin. Ugh. But the Deedle Worms wanted it back. That's quite a sentence there. So we're looking for something more, something synthetic. Well, I hope you can find the lever. Um, Sebastian, would you do me a favour? It depends on the favour, giant miss. I was thinking that you could open the door for me from the inside. 
I could do that, but we can help each other instead. Bring me a piece of leather and I'll open the door, alright miss? But where will I even find that? Ah, oh, I'll see what I can do. Right, we need leather then, do we have any? I mean we've got, a, is this a leather bound book, can we use that? Maybe we go back to the car, because I think the car seats were like leather, right? They looked leather. Let's see if we can use our knife. I'm using the knife so much this episode. Always try it. It works. Whoop, a big hole I made. I've got leather now, yep. I was just thinking cars often have leather seats, so uh, that's the only thing I could think of that was leather based. So let's take the leather back to this little pinecone fella and hand it over. Here you go, little fella. Hope that's okay for you. Wow, thank you again, Giant Miss. Our tribe for Pine Zelos will be very happy. And now I'll open the door. Just give me a second. Sweet. There we go. Is he alright? Ouch. Are you alright, Sebastian? Sebastian? I'm... I'm alright, Miss, yes. Good. Well, thank you, you opened the door. You're welcome, Giant Miss. Eh. Fabio! Oh, there's his little friend. Oh, well, I have to go, miss. Good night. Hey, Fabio, wait for me. I have the lever. <laughs> they, can, they can mate now. Uh, huh. There's nothing in here I could use. Hmm. That's strange. So there's nothing actually even in there. So what do we do? Go back? Oh, he's found a shovel. There you are, Fran. Look, I found a pair of shovels. Let's dig. Okay, let's do it. Let's get to work. And here they are, investigating the grave of Fran and her family. It's pretty morbid. Well, now we'll have to come up with something to open the coffins. They're stuck. I had a crowbar in my car just in case, but I can't find it. Oh, I took the crowbar, sir. I needed it to open the door. Do you want it back? No need, Fran, but you can do the honours of opening the coffins. Imagine asking this child to open her own family's coffins up. That's so irresponsible and, like, twisted. You should know better. You should say, go and sit in the car, I'll check this out, and I'll come back to you and let, let you know what I find in a minute. Alright, sir, I'll open them. Okay, let's do this then. Let's open this one first, left to right. Um, here we go. Oh! Yeah, that's uh, her father, I think. The deedle worms took your eyes. Next one along then. Oh, mother, you're so skinny. A bit too much, I would say. And let's check. Is this going to be Fran inside? No. Is that her cat? Woo, I'm not in the coffin. Great. But that can't be my kitty because Mr. Midnight's alive. Mmm, maybe he's not though. Maybe it's been it with the whole time, like we said. Did you see anything that could bring us closer to the killer? No, sir, I just feel really bad doing this, seeing my parents like this. And also, that dead cat is not my cat, they're lying. Fran, I told you, your cat was missing and maybe this one actually is your cat. It can't be, sir. I did find my kitty, you have to believe me. Take me home and I'll show you, please. Alright, Fran. I'll take you back home. I'll take care of this later. I still need to finish some... I still need to find some clues. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. As the doctor says himself. They're just leaving these graves exposed. They could at least have the decency to uh, cover them back. Oh, wow. Okay. He's been consumed. Vanished into the hands of darkness. You have no manners. I'm not afraid of you anymore. I've taken away from you the light. The one you love. The one you respect. And the one you desire to love you. Uh, this doesn't look good, guys. She's down. Is that the end of the chapter, I wonder? We've got a cutscene. I feel like this is the end of the chapter. You broken little girl. 
the House of Madness invites you inside. That is sinister. If you want to find those you love, in darkness you must wake up. Wake up now, Fran. Wake up. We're awake and ready to face the final chapter. Okay guys, we went to chapter 5 and I recorded my reaction and intro to that, but I'll show you that in the next video where we actually play through it. For now, this has been the end of chapter 4 and Frambo is getting really good. We're finally understanding why some of the things are the way they are. Things are coming together, but there's still many mysteries up in the air. So do tune in in uh, the next few days or so for the final part of Fran Bow. I'm not sure exactly when I'll upload it because I've got quite a lot on at the moment, but it should be within the next week. And then once we've covered that video, I'll start working on the story explained video afterwards. I hope you've been enjoying this series. I have really been enjoying playing through this game. If you have enjoyed it, remember to hit the like button down below, leave me a comment, and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.